joining us for the December Gate Equity Webinar, where we explore topics related to equity and graduation success. This webinar will be recorded, and we're working on our process for making our webinars ADA compliant, so stay tuned for those recordings. The PowerPoint's posted on OSPI on the Gate Equity Webinar page, and if you want to follow along, that link is also in the chat box so that you can um, get to it easily that way. Also, we'd like to ask that you direct questions that you have for us to the Q&A, not the chat, so that we can more easily monitor and respond to you. That's more for commentary. Uh, I'm Tiffany Anderson, OSPI Graduation Equity Program Supervisor, and today we're talking about Sunnyside's early warning system. I'm joined today by Dixie Grunenfelder, Director of K-12 System Supports for System and School Improvement. So glad to have you with us. Yay! Yeah. And we're also featuring um, Assistant Principal Dave Martinez from Sunnyside High School, and he's the one who is going to talk about those awesome early warning systems going on at Sunnyside. We're really glad to have his expertise and to have this really cool practical example. Um, Superintendent Reichdahl's K-12 vision has three phases, each lasting two years, from small improvements to a full redesign of the K-12 education system. Early warning systems are an important part of these goals because they use data to close opportunity gaps and help more students for careers, college, and life. According to our 2014 analysis by the Washington State Institute for Public Policy, we know that each graduate creates benefits of more than half a million dollars in higher earnings, as well as societal savings from areas such as healthcare and unemployment compared to students that don't graduate. Early warning systems are built on the ABCs, their attendance, behavior, and coursework. These are borne out in research as high leverage points that will predict graduation success. Our goals for today are to get you familiar with early warning systems, get some practical advice on early warning systems from Sunnyside specifically, and we'll give you some resources to help you along the way. Um, I want to mention that at OSPI we're working on an integrated student support protocol to help schools implement a multi-tiered system of support, or an MTSS. I want you to appreciate that Sunnyside has a robust MTSS. They've composed this like a symphony where one aspect complements and blends with all of the others. Their early warning systems run through shared leadership. It's built on data that activates tiered support. Supports are put in place using team-driven problem solving and including family and community partnerships. Data work isn't done in isolation and it incorporates all the key players in constant communication. So kudos to you guys, that is amazing. Dave and his team are doing this work really well, and he's going to tell you more about it. So we want to start off with a poll. Um, <coughs> are you using an early warning system? Yes? Maybe? Not yet. So we're going to do that poll right away. And if you have any questions for Dave to get started, you can put that in the Q&A feature. one question. Um, Marilee would like to know uh, specific information about parent and community involvement in Sunnyside. So as we go through, Dave, maybe you could address that as we move through. Yeah, you, I think one of the slides is going to hit a little bit on that. If not, we can talk a little bit later. as much time as possible to talk about what you're doing because it's so great um, and we're so glad you're here so do you want to tell us a little bit about what is happening at Sunnyside sure um, can, am I able to control the slides or is that um, I think I'm gonna advance them okay so yep so just tell me when and I'll move them forward all right go ahead we'll get to the next one um, and go ahead and go one more all right, so I wanted to give, this is just um, 
kind of gives the story of Sunnyside High School. And you can see that we're a large uh, comprehensive high school. Um, almost 2,000 students uh, opened in the door this year. Um, and you can see where we were as graduation rate from 2008 um, to, to, um, to last year, we were 90.2%. Um, and you can see that um, we were, we were um, at 10, 2010 11, we, we received the SIG grant, and that's really when the work began in our school. We were fortunate enough to um, have Dr. Selena, he's a, a professor from Gonzaga University, became our uh, turnaround principal, and he really was uh, kind of the, the, the catalyst for helping this school put together the systems that we've created now. So, this first slide, I just wanted to give everybody. Just kind of a, an overview, if you don't know where Sunnyside is, the central part of, of Washington, South Central, and uh, just gives a little bit of the, the map of where we've been and where we're going. Wow, that is a huge difference in yeah. that and little it, time. And I think we might get on, and it's just, the it's a, it's a lot of work. We have an amazing staff, we have an amazing counseling department. Um, our admin team is really focused on the work. Uh, and we've got great students, and uh, the culture of our building is so different um, in our building than when, uh, we, you know, we always had, we had great kids, but now it's just a, a place where it's a fun place to be, it's a fun place to teach, uh, it's a fun place to be a student right now. So you can uh, go on to the next slide there. And yeah, as I was saying, we were a state school, 10-11, we were, you know, labeled uh, one of the lowest uh, performing high schools in the state of Washington. Uh, we received the federal grant and it was a, a, an, an amazing partnership that was developed between Sunnyside School District and Gonzaga University. Um, and probably it was a really outside the box thing that hadn't happened before. Um, we had the, the it was the, the perfect blend of uh, Dr. Selena with, he had, you know, he was a uh, the experience of his work in the public education and then the research and the, uh, the the theory and the things that came from Gonzaga University and so we were able to blend that all together and you can see the results that's happened here at Sunnyside and then uh, Ryan Maxwell is our current principal he's done a just amazing job of continuing that work uh, you can go ahead next slide um, the, this shows the the work we really use our analytics a lot they're um they're important to us because we want to see um uh, we're not at 100 percent so we look at at the uh the numbers and we we look at what areas we do we need to make tweaks in um and uh so this gives you kind of a an overview of how we've done um even with our special pops does that slide make sense to everybody we're in awe. We're speechless. It's beautiful, Dave. <laughs> so beautiful. Especially that low income number. That's really amazing. You know, and that's, we've done a lot of, um, we do we do quite a bit of presentations and um, we had a, it was a neat opportunity about three or four years ago to go up to Gonzaga and we were presenting to undergrads that are going into education. There was this, I don't know, if, there was this belief or this underlying current thinking that adults were having an on t uh, a difficult time making an impact on student achievement. So I wanted to go up there and show undergrads that absolutely adults have a huge impact on student achievement. And they, they were, it was the professors that did a nice job because they'd done a lot of research on, on uh, poverty and graduation rates. And research was showing that high poverty, low graduation rates. Well, we kind of blew that theory up because we were, at that time, we were 100% free and reduced and our graduation rates were just climbing and climbing so it, it despite the the barriers that are put in place our staff and our student body are, are very resilient and they, they work super hard to, to make sure that we're creating a, a great product so you can go to the uh the next slide um this is a an important slide because it shows how we are set up in our building. Uh, we call them gardens. And so you can see the, um, Mr. Maxwell, Ryan Maxwell, he's our principal, so he's kind of the, the head gardener. 
and then each of the the assistant principals are giving given an area of the school where they um, uh, they're accountable for those areas. So the successes and the failures in those in those areas uh, fall on the shoulders of the admin. So there's a lot of um, support that's put in place, and and then Ryan's job is to be the um, uh, just kind of the guy that holds it all together and makes sure that the the balls are staying up in the air and that each of the gardeners are are doing the work to make sure that their uh, that their gardens are are flourishing. So you can see how each of those are broke up. It's kind of almost like a, a college campus where you have um, uh, you know areas that uh, each of the departments are in charge of. So any questions on that? Because that's kind of when we do our presentations, that's kind of a unique thinking. Um, and for us, it's, it just makes so much sense. Um, any specific questions on this? Because this is a big, a big deal, especially when we get into the next parts about how we've created our, our systems. Did these come about like organically? Did these things fit together or were they just kind of like a hodgepodge of like, I'm dealing you these cards? No. Um, well, no, it was, you know, this was at the beginning of Dr. Selena had, uh, when we came in and he, what, what areas were our strengths and, uh, and then he would just kind of, you know, the first year it wasn't as tight as this in our garden works. Um, and we had a couple of us that had counseling in the beginning and then it kind of morphed into that, that, that I had counseling and then, um, the discipline side, that's a big, you know, a big deal there. And, uh, Wally Shearer had the discipline side of the school. Um, and then, and, and then we just, James Wise is our newest assistant principal and he had uh, his math, he had a math background and, and then he's taken over our attendance and there's some really cool things happening there. Um, Holly Oler does our advisory program and uh, senior projects, CTE, and then Gabe Darbison. And with the assessment, um, the, you know, all the state assessments, there needed to be someone accountable in the admin team. And so that's really what this all is. Each of the admin in, in, in our school really feels accountable for each of these areas. They're not responsible for everything, but they're accountable for everything. And, and that's a big deal because. Um, and that was one of the very first, very first things we learned about was the difference between accountability and responsibility. You can't be responsible for everything, but you sure can be accountable for things. Dave, who covers the post-secondary uh, work? Which so, so that does a combination. A lot of that is covered in our advisory program, with, and Holly does that through advisory. Um, we have part of it in our um, in our counseling department. We have one of our. our um, one of our specialists does a lot of information getting out and he gives to Holly to go out to advisory. Uh, we do advisory huddles with our seniors and juniors. And that's an area where now that's at, at the beginning of this work, it was graduation, graduation, graduation. Now graduation's happening. Now the next step for us is, okay, now how do we make sure, you know, what, when, how, and where USHS students receive uh, the timely, accurate, timely and accurate information about post-secondary. Um, Sometimes um, that information isn't always accurate. I mean, not you know, a lot of us have graduated from college a long time ago, and so uh, we want to make sure that our students not only are getting the timely information, but it's the most up to date and the most truthful and accurate information too. Right. So really, the finish line isn't graduation anymore; it's post graduation. So it's, it's not a unique you're, bucket. It's everybody's. Yeah. I'm yeah, sure. you're going to see. There's a slide at the end. And I haven't even fully rolled this out with the whole team yet, so you guys will be a, uh, you'll get to see this piece, and it's our, kind of our next steps. And that's one of our last slides. Um, and we we got a question actually that I think um, is interesting. Okay. Looking at this, are we to assume that only one admin handles the discipline, or is that admin the one who oversees just the data piece and the steps yeah. of intervention? Yeah, he is the one person that oversees. Um, Overseas uh, discipline, um, and 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 um, you know it's a big job, but it's also you, you think about it in your school when it comes down to it's really just a, a small percentage of your frequent flyers, and then um, while he's in a uh, created systems there with our security um, to have almost a, a caseload of frequent flyers where they can check in, how are things going, we want to make sure that um, you know. The things you've agreed to, you're doing. Wow. 
Oh. And you guys are a pretty big school. Yeah, almost 2,000. Yeah, almost 2,000 students. Well, we'll keep going. Um, do you want to talk a little bit about the conceptual framework? Yeah, so this is a, again, this is a huge deal for us. And this is an area sometimes that we do presentations. Um, I'm not sure people fully grab onto this piece because uh, they want to see the, the, the what things that we're doing. And those are important, but without this in place, um, none of the other things would work as efficiently or effectively as they do and so our, uh, and we've been fortunate ryan uh was uh principal of the year and he had last year and so he had a or was it two years ago anyway he had a, a pretty cool experience as he was able to go to washington dc and meet with principals from all over the country and the one thing that a lot of places didn't have was this piece they couldn't or they didn't, if they had it that wasn't described really clearly and in our building our staff were very familiar with our conceptual framework and they can describe what that looks like uh, not only school wide but in their classrooms and so there's three parts to it the first part is academic press um, which is having a high standard but the the second part of it which sometimes gets forgotten about is not only having that high standard but a belief that people can meet it there's a slide that I don't have in here today and it matched there's a CEE question that asks staff do you believe all students can meet standard and it was amazing to see as our our uh, work in our building increased the staff belief increased and it almost mirrored exactly what our graduation rate was so uh, as staff believed that they could make an impact to help students make meet standard um, that had a obviously had a huge impact in our building so there was not only there's not only the the high standard but there's a belief that people can meet it and you can take this for this framework and you can talk about staff to students but you can talk about admin to staff also so it's uh, again so it's a high high standard with a belief that everybody can meet it and then the social support those are any of the, the helps that people put in place to help people meet that that standard but the glue that holds it all together is the relational trust and that's when the person giving it may, helps the person that's receiving it feel safe um, sees that that person has something to offer and sees that they're putting in time and energy because without that piece in place the person won't let you push them or press them and they surely won't trust any of your supports that you put in place so our conceptual framework is just the glue it's the glue that's helped our culture be what it is today um, and it's uh, like I said earlier it's a very fun place to be a, a student and a staff member right now any questions on that Go ahead. Do you want to describe your social support for the, your partnerships, maybe with your community partners and parents? Um, yes, you, you're you're going to get some of these when we get to our. Uh, there's a slide on here that talks about our senior uh, AHOD graduation meetings. Um, we actually have we we do we work with our uh, comprehensive mental health in our community, um, and we have drug and alcohol that's part of our school. Um, and those are areas that one of the areas and that's I know it's a statewide issue right now is uh, student mental health and I actually have a uh, I saw Spokane was doing some pretty cool stuff with site-based therapy uh, site-based site um, mental health therapists and we actually have a meeting coming up this week to do a uh, kind of we're hoping to build a, a, a collaboration between comprehensive and Sunnyside where you know it's a three-quarter quarter because we want to stay tied to the the doctor that's at the conference mental health so that we have that access and we want it to be site-based because we have a need just like most high school with kids with mental health issues so that's one of us a neat partnership that we're hoping that's going to be built be available by the end of the year or by the beginning of this this next year um, we are pretty fortunate we have two social workers on campus and they're utilized a lot they do a lot of they do the a triage um, and um, and then if they it needs to be referred to comprehensive it does but if it doesn't if something we can handle in-house and it stays here so we uh but it's one of our another it's a new system that was put in place in the middle of last year and it's pretty tight now so uh students with mental health issues are, are being trying to be kept here and, and given the support that they need in our building
All right. Um, this next slide is one that, um, again, it's part of our presentations already, and it talks about the Kaizen approach. Uh, when we get start to look at these um, data dashboards, I hope everybody understands that what we're doing now is way different than we first started. Um, and we've, on our, our data dashboard, when we first started, was pretty, um, um, I don't know what the right word is, um, pretty generic gave us the the needs that we had at that time and we've just continued to add to it we'll start we'll look at analytics we'll say okay we now we got to pay attention to this or um so it's uh it's what our ideal is or you know obviously the ideal is to get to 100 percent graduation and where are we currently at uh, and then how do we build on it when nobody's and that's kind of a, a neat mentality in this building that we're never we're never arrived we've, we've got work to still do But, all right. Um, and I put this slide here because I want you to see, um, you're going to see how this, it, as far as the, 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 the senior all hands on deck, we could do a, a PowerPoint or we could do a, a meeting just on this. Um, but we've created, they've created, and it, it comes out of uh, the next slide. Let's go to the next slide and we'll go back to this. So as we had to, our, we put our PLCs in place the 10 11 school year and our PLCs are very high functioning also um, but counselors had to figure out a way and to to support students and we knew that graduation was uh, I think we were being measured on so the counselors in their PLC um, had to answer these questions and so they went the first thing they wanted students to know is what their graduation status was and then they, the next question was, how do you know if they know it? The poor second question. So they created a color system. And you go back, I'm sorry, we're gonna flip back and forth there a little bit. So we'll go back to the previous slide. So this was how they were answering um, the poor second question, which is how do you know students know it? And so they created a, a color system. And they're, again, the thing that makes it work, <coughs> excuse me, is they've kept it very simple. And, um, Green means on track, um, yellow means just credits, orange is just state testing, and red is um, state testing and credits. Um, there was one year where um, there was gonna be a couple other credits or colors added in for specific state testing, but it got kind of complicated. And that's the cool thing too, is it's safe here to, you wanna try something out, you're given that permission to do it, and you can try it out, and if it doesn't work, then you just stop and you, you know, your feet back underneath it and and it's just a safe place to do that and you go back to our conceptual framework and relational trust has allowed that safe feeling to be in place where um, staff are allowed to try things to impact and improve student achievement so that's where the color system came out it's super it's again it's super simple but it's so effective um, you'll hear seniors say I'm green now or they'll say I'm almost caught up or I just passed the state test and now I'm I'm yellow, or I just passed state test. I'm green. Um, it's one of the coolest things with, with our um, the old COE classes when those kids met standard, and we bring them into the library, and it was it was such an emotional time where you had staff members that have been putting in their heart and sweat and tears, uh, counselors have been supporting, and the kids are in the room and they're just waiting on you know on the edge of their seat for what was the information, and they get the information, the teachers and counselors and kids are hugging it's one of the coolest things to see and you really see students being owned in our building so <clears throat> that's how the color system it works and again it's super simple the the picture on the left of your the PowerPoint here those are our graduation contracts and our goal before is before the first conference is mid-october to have all our orange red and yellow students and parents met with so there's, they all know what their graduation path looks like. We haven't had a parent go to the superintendent regarding graduation since 10-11. Um, we haven't had a, we haven't even had a parent go to the principal. We had one two years ago, but it wasn't that they didn't know. They knew, and they we'd met with them several times. They just didn't like the answer they were getting about graduation. So that's one of the things that our our system is, we're very proud of. That's one that, that I take super personal that we're not gonna allow a parent not to know about graduation. 
Any questions on that? Because that's a pretty big deal there. Yeah, that is huge. To have an early warning system in in a way that students are part of that and know their data and own own their own progress and their tracking status. Yeah. And I, and uh yeah, and the cool thing about this too is with the color system that it's it's uh it's not like the red kids are like, oh, you know, or the green kids are saying things like, you know, you're red, get away from here and like that. They're working hard together to help each other get green. And they're like, okay, you've got to get your rear here to school because you've got to pass, make sure you're passing that class. Um, you've got to be here. So it's a really, it's created a cool culture of support among our student body. So all and again, on tech means all students, all staff. Well, all yeah, students. well, yeah, everybody said you're right. Um, and where it first came out of is we're a, we do a grade level again we could spend a lot of time just on AHOD. Um, we're a grade level counseling system where we have uh, the four grade levels and they move up each year with the count with the student body. Uh, but senior year, everybody takes a caseload of seniors. <clears throat> and so we have our migrant graduation specialist that takes the caseload of the migrant students. We have our school psych that takes Fed. We have um, you know the, the grade levels. The freshman, sophomore, and junior will take a, a caseload of seniors, and our two social workers will take a caseload of seniors also. So it's 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 spreading out the numbers, just making sure there's another set of eyes on our students. And then our advisories, they're they're also great to pull up with the students too. So it's another set of adults. So it's one of the fun of this when we get students coming from small schools, and they're like, um, the most adult attention they get is at Sunnyside. And again, it's a, a staff of you know, 100 teachers um, and almost 2,000 students. And so it'd be very easy to get lost and we pride ourselves in not letting people get lost. Yeah, that's really special to be able to do that. That's a really unique thing. Yeah, that's, I love, I really, my office is actually in a counseling center now, so I know all new kids coming in. And that's one of the first things, like, in a, like two weeks after they've been here, I, I, the first thing I'm gonna ask them is, What's different about our school than your old one? And part of it, I'm kind of a competitive guy, but also I really am curious is, you know, what what are we doing well? And it's it's fun to hear kids say, yeah, Sunnyside's a place where the adults know our stuff. <laughs> and it's a good thing. Yeah. They might say it a little different than that, but they mean that. <laughs> I love this form. It looks a lot like our high school and beyond plan. Absolutely, yes. Being able to keep track of all of those important pieces and taking ownership that's really amazing yeah so we can go into is there any any questions on that if not we can go into the next slide that we start to get into our dashboard we have had a request for your template to be shared of course so okay. we'll make sure and get those on the website all right so this is part of our admin data data dashboard we meet um weekly and part of our admin data dashboard is looking at how things are going. Um, one of the cool ones on the left-hand side there, that's again how we track. Um, this, it doesn't show here, but then the counselors actually have by each counselor, how many greens, how many yellows, how many orange, how many reds, and, and they share that out monthly. So they're able to see the progress of how their kids are going. Um, and so that's a powerful piece. They've tied into uh, TPEP. You know, they've uh, they've they've looked at how they measure, how are they impacting student growth, and they've been a support for graduation, obviously there. And then if you look at the slide on the right or the picture on the right, that's our um, by department, and you can see uh, the bottom the bottom three you start to see them being yellowed out before the one up top that was we were just making sure we were looking at a previous trimester but the bottom now so we know that we're eventually going to be measured on ninth grade fail rate in english math and science so what we've done now is now each week we're measuring and we're looking at how the f rate is in those those areas and this is super important it's not we where you might see the f rate go up and we'll use my garden for example ninth grade science it's not going to those and what are you doing wrong is okay is there is there anything going I mean, actually 10 percent is pretty good but it would be is there anything you need more support of is our kids not showing up for grizzly time grizzly time two um 
Is there, is there an attendance issue in place um, that we're not getting through our attendance? So it's, it's not going to the teacher and say, what are you doing? It's wh what are we not doing to support those kids as a, as a building, which is a, kind of a little different than coming into a teacher and say, what are you not doing? And that's super important. Um, we did have a question about that. Did you use um, a specific program to build your dashboard? Is it power by? No, we have. So we have, um, this is just in Google. Um, in Google, this is our sheet is, and then we just update our power school. We just up, it takes like five minutes each each week, and it's kind of one of the things I put in there as a department that rate. Um, we've got, but we also James Wise. Um, let's see, you're gonna get to the. We're gonna get to a, a slide a little bit down the way. He's amazing with formulas, and he's able to pull things out of, out of our um, um, power school, out of our school, student information system, and. I can just say, hey, I, this is what I want to, can we put this in there? And he's like, oh yeah, yeah. And then we have it. And that's how we've, again, that Kaizen approach. We, we start with a, a data dashboard, what we currently need. It's gonna help us support students and staff. And then we like, okay, we need to, need to adjust this. I wanna be able to see this. So you don't have to do like double data entry or any of that. It just populates because of Brian's formula. On, on the other one, on, on uh, James's formula, yeah. On this one, I have this one. I do. I, I just cut and paste off of our power power school on the on the um, on the department one. But it takes not very much time, and and we use it. That's another thing too. If it was data that wasn't being used, it would probably be harder to do it. But when we know it's such an important part of our school that people get to see and use, that it, you know, five minutes is not a lot of time to put in place, so. All right, wanna to go to the next, are there any questions on this one? Okay. Keep going, Ryan. Uh, again, and then this is our, this is a couple of other areas that we pay attention to. Um, Wally Shear does a, uh, gives an update on the, on the behavior. Um, and, um, and we're, you know, you look at our analytics and Dixie and I have talked about this, uh, the, one of the things though it's doing is giving the, all the districts, so it's including our our uh, middle school um, information in there too. But it's uh, it, it look it'll it might look high to some people when you look at our analytics off of the website. Uh, but we also when we discipline somebody, it's not about you're disciplined and you're gone from here. You're you're going to get to discipline, but you're going to come back and we're going to surround sound you and you're going to get the support you need um, and we're going to get you back on track. So we're, we're really good about doing both parts of it. We can hold you accountable, but you know we're bringing to bring you back in here also. And then our attendance piece. I want the attendance. Oh, let's go back to the attendance real quick. So I want to make sure when you look at those, we're 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 looking at average APA. We're looking at average period attendance. Um, we're not doing ADA. So this is APA, and our kids, our juniors and seniors, can earn open campus. They have to have a 90% um, or better uh, average period attendance, both classes together. So it's um, it's it raises the bar a little bit because you're not just saying three of five classes that you need to be present for ADA or for a six. I'm not sure on a six period day, but we're talking every period every day. And this this report this data is given out weekly. So it goes over our announcements so our whole student body hears it, and they're used to hearing it. That's when they find out if campus is open or closed. I said that's very motivating. <laughs> What's that? I'm sorry. That's super motivating. Yeah. Going to school. And I think and it's it, really it is. And we talked to them like, you know, 88% for 12.5, that meant um, there was eight kids that didn't make it every day or all periods that week. So you look at it that way, it's only eight kids. And then, you know, we'll be at exec council. I said, how many of you guys missed one period last week? And they're like, you know, raise their hands. And they're, they're all, they're great kids. And they just missed it. They had a dog's point, whatever. But it's, it's every period, every day. And so when you put it, when it's down to eight kids, they're like, oh gosh, we can do this. So um, it helps them think about it a little differently. And we'll say you missed by eight or you missed by four kids this week. <clears throat> And by looking at periods, it's really cool that you can get it down to the time of day and the specific class and those kinds of trends too. 
It's a great way to look at attendance. Yeah. And you can look on there, oops, we can go back one more time. You can see also, you know, the expulsion, it, most of that's going to be, um, it, it could be a uh, drug, it could be, you know, marijuana use, or it could be, um, usually if it's a, if it's an argument, it's usually going to be a ninth grade girls about a boy from fifth grade, and they decide they're going to fight about it or argue about it in high school. And it's, it's one of the things that we've started doing now is we'll go in there. Um, the beginning of the year we had, um, there was a few more than grizzly-like behavior about those type of things. So we did, we decided we were going to do a ninth grade meeting. So we brought all the ninth graders together during advisory, and we talked about the, the amount of adults that care about kids in our building. And we had the advisory teachers there, and we talked about our conceptual framework and trust, and that there are people in our building that if you go talk to about something, we can work it out before it turns into something else. And it was, it's, uh, it was so funny. There was an argument that same day, and the two boys, and they, they didn't fight, but there was an argument. And they got down to the office, and one of the other assistant principals said, Martinez was so funny, because one of the boys felt so bad, because he said, what he, his words were, Martinez just talked about us doing this. I feel like a jerk. So, they, so that's what we'll do. We'll, when, we have these, when we have things that we don't like, we're going we're gonna to meet about it. We're going to talk about it. We have an opening assembly every trimester that we, we share our numbers. We talk about how to start off strong for the trimester. And, uh, and then Mac, Mr. Maxwell on this one, we talked about, listen, we don't act this way here at Sunnyside. So knock it off. And it was, it's pretty cool that we can do it that way. Instead of like, what are we going to do? What are we going to do? Well, we're, we're going to do something. There we go. So, all right. Okay, so this is another one. We, I wanted to show on this slide, you're like, why do we have PEP assembly stuff up there? I want to show, we even use a data dashboard in our PEP assembly. So to win our PEP stick, we, part of it is you have to pass, we do the weekly attendance and percentage of passing all your classes. So, and this rubric's put up, and we have an assembly on Friday, we have our winter sports assembly, and we'll put up this start of it, who's in the lead before we even get in there and start cheering. Um, and so it's, it's kind of a new twist. This came out of, again, the year one of our uh, systems turnaround. We had our first assembly, and I, I helped with our assemblies, and I thought it was kind of a good one. And I went to Dr. Slane, and I said, what do you think about that? And he said, well, that was pretty good, but how's that going to help our graduation? So <laughs> as, uh, so now we've we have helped us think about that. And as a student body, and, and uh, so we put together, we said, okay, let's add this part of our, we know what it means to be a grizzly, not only be involved, not only having you know, being loud, it's not about your poster or the class competition. It's also about, you know, passing classes and being here in school. So whatever is important to you becomes important to our students and staff. Um, I talked a little bit about the first day of the trimester. Uh, we utilize, we have about, usually do a 25 to 30 minute. Uh, we just received a, our third school of distinction award and uh, our, Assistant, our, our superintendent, ESD, Kevin Chase, came and he presented to our student body. And it's uh, pretty cool because he's also a, a previous, he's a Grizzly alumni and uh, was an assistant principal here. So it's neat to have him come back and, uh, uh, and, and give that award out. And then the far right, well, we don't need to go through the video today, but <clears throat> we do a lot of work around Connect, Build, and Vision. And this is for not only students, but it's for our staff. We want all our students and staff to feel like, um, you know, they're connected to our building, um, that they have a value here. We want them to build strong relationships, and we want them to and be able to see a successful future. And if you think about that, those three things, connect, build, and vision, it's the reasons why, why, why do people leave the field of education? They don't feel connected. Um, they don't feel strong relationships, and they have a hard time seeing themselves being successful in the field of education or in the building they're in. And it's the exact same reason why kids drop out of high school. They haven't built a connection to it. Um, they haven't built strong relationships. And they haven't been able to see themselves being successful in school. So we do a lot of work around CBE. And then our PEP assembly, we do a class competition. Every single time you're going to hear the Connect, Build, and Vision, the activities are going to be tied to that. And, um, and sometimes I have to stretch it a little bit. But you're going to hear me teaching about Connect, Build, and Vision every assembly. And uh, it, it becomes part of their language, student language. We've had it, our valedictorians put it in their um, in their valedictorian speeches. They talked about you know the the importance of being connected to our building and having a, a strong relationships with staff and students and, and being able to see their future. 
senior projects. You see CBEs all over the language now too. So it's really a part of our, our school culture and our school common language. Dave, didn't you say that, that the, the cheer squad asked what the theme was before they went off to their summer camp or something? Oh yeah, I forgot I talked to you about that. Yeah, I think, so um, uh, together, this year's our, we have a, a, our STEM is Together We Will. And this year our, our, our theme was reach new ideals, reach our new ideal. And so before they went off to their camp, they had a chance to, to meet together and they thought they wanted to be able to think about how they're gonna do stuff not just, and we have an amazing rally squad, um, but they, they wanted to go not just to be better cheerleaders, they wanted to come back to be better ambassadors for our school. Uh, the dance team did the same thing. They, we met with dance and we talked about um, the impact that they have, not just as dancers and to do pretty cool dance moves and stuff like that, but they have an impact not only on their team, but they've got a lot of friends. And they're, they're uh, again, they're, they're a group of ambassadors for our building. So they take a lot of pride in that. amazing. Do you have conversations with community partners and, and um, I'm just curious, does the theme idea go beyond the school walls? No, so um, two, let me, two things we did. One, it was a cool thing last year in graduate. I didn't even know they were doing this. I don't know if, if McKay did this or was it, but the city put graduation season. It was the coolest thing. So all downtown, a lot of cities probably have the flags where they've got like, uh, we, have a, we have a famous lighted implement parade and so they, we put up all lighted Christmas stuff around. But right before graduation, there was these cool graduation banner flags that were all through the city. It was one of the coolest things. And um, I know I broke the law by videotaping driving down the city, but it was cool. I had to have that video. Um, I hope the law enforcement aren't listening and give me a ticket. Um, but that's, uh, so there's some things we do. We do, a, we do a graduate, or we do a homecoming parade that we brought back. I think this is our, this is our third year we did. And it's one of the coolest things that it's, we do it on the Thursday before our homecoming and the community's coming out and they watch and we have the band and we have grid kids football and cheerleaders are in it. We have, we had ROTC new to our building this year. They led it. Um, we have all these different clubs involved. Um, our goal is to get the middle school band involved, middle school ASB. Um, so we want, you know, we, we're, we're, we're building on that to get more involvement in that piece of it. There's a lot of people. It's amazing the amount of people that come out and just watch. And it's just a, you know, our band going up and then the, everybody cheering at different clubs. And it, it just creates a cool, small, small, a cool uh, community involvement piece in our building, our school. Thank you. Yeah. So let me, this uh, next slide here. So this is a build off of we, the first slide, first couple of slides we saw on our data dashboard were, um, kind of big picture. And so I think this was last year, this, this came about. And we do, our counselors, we do a pre-PLC, because every Wednesday is our PLC, and we do a pre-PLC on Wednesdays, and it's the, excuse me, the counseling department, myself, um, James Wise, and the attendance team. And we just go through, so this is a screenshot of, oh, great, I think this is some seniors, and we look at the kids that, um, um, their attendance and if they're failing three or more classes and then we're making sure that no one's being left behind on this and so it's where you can see there's there's things and it's filled in before we go in and, and it's just a real quick we go through 12 11 10 9 and we, we try to get it done in an hour um, and uh, it's again it's just a way to make sure now there's more data that's on these two because you have kids that have two F's or one F or and so it's just a way to go from numbers down to names. And uh, this is what I, we love this. And this helps our staff um, because our staff now know, and we were going to invite staff to all the meetings, but trying to coordinate, you know, a kid with five Fs and five teachers. And so we just showed our staff this and they're like, okay, that makes sense. Because, you know, what the staff were going to say, we just assume was going to be, you know, you'll be okay if you just come to class and you do the work. And, and, you, and you act like a grizzly, you're gonna be fine. And so um, that way, but this, it was important that our staff knew this was happening so that they're not sitting in their room going, okay, Johnny's got five apps. I hope somebody's paying attention to this because I know he's failing my class. And it just helped our, again, it helped with the culture of our building because staff knew that something was happening with kids. Now there's not a magic wand because just because you come on this list that 
in one meeting we're gonna wave our wand at you and you're gonna come off it because you've all of a sudden just figured out that it really comes down to attending, behaving, and passing your class. So, but it does it, it really narrows it down so that we see who's there and who needs that extra attention. And this is sorry, this is one that does come out of the formula that James has put in place. And it, there's a tab on the far left that says all students, so it's it's updated daily. And I love this because it's super addictive. <laughs> and I, you can just pay attention to this and really make sure nobody's getting lost. Okay, and we can go to the next slide. <clears throat> and so <clears throat> this next slide, I talked a little bit about the, the relationship we're building with Comprehensive. <clears throat> and we've done it, we've created an online referral system now where teachers, other counselors, um, admin, actually a parent could even do this too. It's on our counseling website. If everyone wants to go and look at that, you can see what, click on it. Um, and it's a way to do a referral for a student based on mental health or grief. Uh, we have drug and alcohol in there, but um, it's usually those first two, mental health or grief. And they do a referral. And what it does, we've done this in forms. So then an email goes to our two social workers and myself. And then we, um, and then within 24 hours, those, um, within 24 hours, the two social workers will make contact with um, with the student and do a triage just to make sure where they are. If it's something that needs more attention, then we'll get comprehensive in and do a full eval. If it's something that we can handle in-house, we do it. But it's it's so cool. And it's organized it, and they meet Mondays just to make sure that uh, kids that are being, have been seen, that there's a plan in place, and then counselors have access to this also. And so it's just a, go ahead. Is that previous slide, is that part of your admin data dashboard or who updates that? No, if you go back to the previous slide, um, that's, that information is available to admin, oops, that's not, that, that one there. That one, uh, so all the admin have access to it and all the counseling department has access to it. Um, but like if you see, there's a column M. Again, uh, James Wise is amazing with the, the formulas. It pulls, so if there's a kid that's had a referral on our student services, it pulls it and it lets us know that, that the third student there has been referred and shines has seen them for grief. And so it's super, I mean, it gives us all the information we want to know at one time and with specific names. Wow. And again, just remember, this wasn't where we started. So it's like it, we really, that, that first PowerPoint or that first slide about, you know, passing classes, number of kids failing classes, that's where we started. It's just evolved into this. You know, we want to get, we want to get above 90. And to get above 90, we know that it's going to take paying this close attention. The 42 students that didn't graduate last year, we know it was attendance, it was behavior, uh, either mental health or drug and alcohol. And, um, so, and those two things led to not passing classes. So that's how this has come about. And then the last slide, this is kind of the next thing now. And so what we've done now is we're looking at our kids and we're using FAFSA. And then we've actually added another slide, another column onto this fifth year plan. So through each advisor, uh, there's like 23 of senior advisory teachers they're gonna have this shared with them. And so all Seth would know the student's name if they've finished their FAFSA, and then she could write in what their fifth year plan is. They haven't fit, finished their FAFSA, we take it back and we say, okay, let's get that done. So we make sure you're, you've got it ready to go. So this is that Envision Your Future part. And this is our newest piece. It was part of my next 45 day plan. Can you talk about the release to nonprofit column? Um, no. We haven't yet. What is that? Is that do you guys share the information with? You know, them? no. Yeah, um, so this is like brand new to me. So now, what the really column G is the one I'm paying attention to. I want to make sure that our, our kids are getting the FAFSA piece done. And some of them may not do it. And there's like, this is why. I know why. Um, this is where we are. I don't need to do that. I've got this plan in place. Uh, so. 
again, so we just put, I put this out there because, and I haven't even fully shared this with the team. I just wanted to let people see that our next step is now, how do we make sure we're getting our kids to that next step? Um, we do have a question from someone. Uh, this is from Minerva. How do you screen emotional and behavior? Uh, the data you show, uh, like anger management, how do you get this information? So it can come from staff. It could be, and, and, it's, and I, I was, first I was worried that it was just going to be overused. Like, you know, um, kid came in and said something bad today. So they, it's, but it has them in our staff. If we, and we, when we did our PD at the beginning of the year, we talked about this. We had this training. And our staff are aware of that anyway, but it was good to have that as a reminder. And then, but staff have used it. They've seen a kid that came in the beginning of the year and was kind of had a, a you know positive affect, and all of a sudden they come in one day and they're, Heads down, they just look like they're. Um, uh, they they look like you know just just a different affect. So the teacher will do a referral, and it's it's quick. It takes about you know a minute and a half, and it goes through. And our two social workers get that information, and they'll pull the kid down, and then the social workers will then dig a little bit, and they'll find out, hey, this is what's going on. Or and and kids really, they really really deep down want to just tell somebody there's something going on. And we've got two amazing social workers that are pretty good at, at asking the right questions. And then all of a sudden, that kid that just had his head down, all of a sudden, blah. And there's this huge issue that we're going to try and get some help for. So I hope that answered your question. Did you happen to um, connect Sunnyside to United Unidos Coalition? Are you able to connect with community-based prevention initiatives to help you get your students to graduation and post-graduation? Sorry, can you say that one more time? Uh, could you share how or if or are you connected to Sunnyside United Unidos Coalition? Oh, I'm sorry. Yes. Uh, so Kathy Kelly is our uh, district director there, and she's helped us secure. Like we have the last couple of years, we've contracted through an agency to have a drug and alcohol person. This year, um, she helped us get that position, so it's a Sunnyside district person. And so having us be able to have direct access to a, a person that's gonna be here year in and year out has been a big help for us. Um, and, and that person attends those meetings. Um, there's some cool data on the Healthy Youth Survey that we've been paying attention to, and it, it has to do with this year's junior class when they were middle school, their use was above the state average and then as juniors it went below the state average and it's um it was cool to see that we know that there's things happening in our building that's helping kids want to be here and do more pro-social things to stay connected to stay so they get to graduation uh, but it was it was cool to have kathy be able to get that data and say dave have you seen this and put it in front of us and then quantifies the work that we're doing as a whole school. Awesome. Um, well, let's take a moment to reflect. Um, what's one major takeaway you have from Sunnyside? And if you feel like sharing that in the chat box, um, share your thought with everybody. So. Yeah, Lisa, thank you, excellent, moi. <laughs> the really is. one thing that really uh, catches me I know we only have a minute Dave is uh -huh. how much the student is put in the center for knowing their own data and 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 kind of being part of that when I've seen early warning systems before they feel like they're like in a back room and it's like information that a select huh. group of staff know about students um, yeah much more controlled and, and uh, closed off and this feels much more open and I can it's, imagine that can only happen in an environment where it's safe and supportive but um, I really like that feel it's, it's very um, it, it just puts a different slant on this whole idea of early warning systems it, it really is that was one even when what was one of the very first things Chuck saw was kids the kids at Sunnyside saw that we were using data to help them they saw that you know, if we needed to send an SRO with a counselor to go to their house and knock on the door, that we weren't doing that just to punish them. We were going to get them to get them back here so they would do the right thing. Um, you'll hear kids like, 
yeah, that, that, the, the three, four, five F list, I love, 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 love it because I can look at that and I can go out at lunch and I'm just like, hey, what's going on? And they're like, they're, first I get this look in their face, like how in the world out of 2000 people do you know that I'm failing my CWP class right now? And then it's like, well, I just didn't turn in my CBA, but I've got it done. And it's going to be in next week. Or, so it's, there's really no way to hide. And um, when you have that data and you know the kids' names and it's really out of 2000, when you look, there's, you know, there, there was like three kids that had five apps or whatever it was. And, 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 and I pay, you know, I pay attention to all, but I'm going to super, super pay attention to seniors. And then it's just, when you see them, Hey, what are you doing about that class? And again, at first it's shock and they're like, okay, I know you want me to be here. So um, it is, it's a cool atmosphere. Um, our all hands on deck, the counselors, going out and you'll see them go out there with clipboards and uh, you know it looks like they're going out to coach a, a sport and they're going out to to check on their AHODs in the classroom it's a cool relationship between staff and our our teachers and our counseling department because they feel the support it helps with isolationism and where teachers are like I've tried everything sorry you know I'm gonna you're just gonna get an F when they see that that counseling departments are out there um, trying to support them to help get the kids in the classroom to help them get things turned in and and, and then the staff have created some cool support. So we have a Saturday school that when you come to it, it, it looks like a college library where kids have their laptops and there's kids working on a paper or somebody working on a math and somebody's working on science or history. And it, it really does look like a college library. And they, and some are, are voluntold to be there, but most of them are there because they know it's a place they can get caught up. Well, and what a way to feel safe to know that somebody is checking on you to make sure that you're exactly where you need to be. That's so powerful. Yeah. Thanks, Dave. Thank you, Dave. You bet. You guys. And thank you, everybody, for joining us today. We've had a great webinar. Um, we have posted a survey in the chat if you want to tell us how we're doing with the webinar. And um, this next month, we are going to have another webinar on January 10th about systematically building capacity. And for um, those of you who aren't on Gate Webinar or are on Gate Webinar already, um, there was kind of a glitch with our appointments. So just remember, it's the second Wednesday of the month from 10 to 11, all the way through June. So hopefully, we will see you next month for more awesome information from people who are doing the real work. Thanks again, Dave. You are an amazing human being. <laughs> oh, it's a great staff here. I'll tell you that right now. <laughs> Have a great day. Have a great day, everybody. Right. Thank you. Bye.